Yesterday, we introduced the concept of the chain rule. Uh, this is the derivative of a composition of functions. The derivative of f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. We take the derivative of f with respect to g. That is, take the derivative of f, leaving g of x as it is, and then we multiply by the derivative of g of x. In Leibniz notation, we say dy dx is dy du, the rate of change of y with respect to u, the derivative of y with respect to u, times the derivative of u with respect to x. So in using these names, f and g, we might also read this as df dg times dg dx. So we might read this as df dg times dg dx. And in Leibniz notation, it looks like we're kind of canceling out the dg or canceling out the du, which we kind of are. We kind of are. Now, we've mentioned that the chain rule was something that is always in effect. It's just that sometimes the derivative of the inside is just one. Sometimes we have to multiply by the derivative of x with respect to x, which is one. So we don't bother mentioning it. But we should always remember that the chain rule is always in effect. Another thing that we might want to notice is that uh, we are already familiar with this rule, where you multiply by the rates where you multiply the rates. This is what we do. We multiply rates. If you want to figure out the number of inches in a yard, you take the number of inches per foot and the multiply by the number of foot per yard. And you would multiply those, 12 times three. 12 inches, right? Yeah, 12 inches per foot times one foot per yard, or sorry, three foots per yard. The foots cancel out. 12 times three is 36 inches per yard. It's exactly the same thing. It's just that the rates aren't the traditional calculus, which is engineering, engineering rates where it's to be like per time. But it's the same thing that we're doing. So of course, this is what we do with rates. We multiply them. We have like an intermediate intermediary, just like with the yards, the inches to yards, I use feet as the du. And the feet got canceled out in my calculation. Because I was like, oh, 12 inches per foot. And then we multiplied by three foot per yard. these ratios are rates. Not rates in terms of like speed, but rates in terms of inches per foot and foots per yard. And derivatives are rates of change. And slope is rate of change. So derivative is slope. Any questions? It's in a new context and we call them derivatives and stuff, but we're just kind of modifying the old stuff to deal with the new stuff. Remember the three tricks of mathematics. Add zero, multiply by one, do a problem you already know how to do. Modify to a problem that you already know how to do and then upgrade it. So here the feats are canceling out just like the du cancels out or just like the dg cancels out. Right now, we've only got one kind of base rule for derivatives, nx to the n minus one. Right now we've got our favorite, the derivative with respect to x of x to the n, is nx 
to the n minus one. Remember that derivative is rate of change and this matches so far two of the three rates of change we talked about earlier. So set the Wayback Machine to two weeks ago. And I said, here are three kinds of functions where we identify by the rates of change. A linear function has a constant rate of change. The derivative with respect to x of b plus mx is just m. b plus mx is a linear function. Its derivative is m, a constant. Linear function, constant rate of change. has to be consistent, right? Because this is math class. We've got to be consistent. Words mean things here. Not like out there, where words are constantly changing their meanings. What a pain in the ass. Stupid English language, always evolving and stuff. It used to not literally drive me crazy, but now it literally drives me crazy because literally is just like emphasis because English has evolved. But linear means constant rate of change, always has. You can count on this language being nice and consistent. Oh, whoops, this is not actually another rule. This is just connecting this rule to other stuff. The other thing we talked about was that a quadratic function has a linear rate of change. Another thing that we observed was that a quadratic function had a linear rate of change. When we subtracted the values, we didn't get the same, a constant rate of change, but when we subtracted the values in the rate of change, that's where the constant showed up. So a quadratic function has a linear rate of change. So if I take the derivative of a quadratic function, We end up with a linear function because derivative is rate of change. We have previously observed that a quadratic function has a linear rate of change. There's our quadratic function. There's our linear rate of change. Rate of change and derivative almost interchangeable. Quadratic function has linear derivative. Given that we subtract one from the exponent, of course. Also notice that when we look at the rate of change of the rate of change of a quadratic function, that will be a constant. So if we look at the second derivative of a quadratic function, we'll be at a constant. The first derivative is a linear function. The second derivative will just be 2a, a constant. Then there was another one that we had described. There was another function that we had described. Now it was an exponential function. When we said an exponential function has a proportional rate of change.
So we said the following, an exponential function has a proportional rate of change. That's a kind of a terrible way for me to phrase it, but I wanted to say blank function has blank rate of change. I should say the rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to the value of the function, but that doesn't fit the format I used in the other ones. So I'm just gonna use this lazy writing, say it in this terrible way, and then be like, oh, language evolves. We're gonna write down what this means in terms of derivative, because right now we don't know the derivative of exponential function. And this is not gonna entirely reveal the derivative of an exponential function, but it's gonna give us an idea. And it's gonna connect our rule for derivatives that we're for exponential function, the derivative of an exponential function with this concept. I need we need to connect those two things. Every time we come up with a new thing, we've got to connect it to an old thing. So that third trick works, where we just do a problem that we already know. So an exponential function has a proportional rate of change. The rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to the value of the function. So the rate of change The rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to the value of the function. Every time I say the function itself, I feel like I'm trying to make things fancier than they already are. But it also sounds weird to say the value of the plus. I, I don't know. So the rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to the function. The rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to the function. What that means, that is proportional to, means it's a constant multiple of. That's what a proportion is. So when we say one thing is twice as much as the other, we're saying they're proportional and we're stating what the constant of proportionality is. Proportional means one is a constant multiple of the other. Is proportional to. That is one is constant multiple. Of the other. If two things are proportional, then one is a constant multiple of the other. I should say directly proportional, but that's the assumed default proportion. If I want them to be inversely proportional, then I have to state that. It's like saying one X. We get to just say X and we mean one X. So let's call the function itself Y. Let's give our function a typical name like Y. I, 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 if I ever had kids, I would name my kids like I name variables and functions. Name my first kid A. My second kid B. My third kid D. Well, what happened to C? It was actually, ironically, not satisfactory. So. Just kidding. I don't have any kids anymore. I'm just kidding. I've never had kids according to any records anybody can find. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All a joke. No human children were harmed in the creation of that joke. And definitely don't worry about the animals. I take better care of them than I do. All right. So, 
This is what is proportional to me. It means one is a constant multiple of the other. A is proportional to B, means A is equal to some constant times B. So I'm going to call the function itself Y. If y is the function itself, then the rate of change of y, but well, we know the rate of change just means derivative. So the rate of change of y is just y prime. We we'll call that y prime. So the rate of change of the exponential function is y prime. y prime is the derivative of y. It's the rate of change of y. If y is an exponential function, y prime. So let's write this down. Let's take this statement that the rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to the function itself and write that in math. We're saying the rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to, that is, is a constant multiple of the function itself. Look what we have here. Whatever, I've got this exponential function in y. Y is an exponential function. And y prime must also be an exponential function because all we've done is multiply by a constant. If this is an exponential function, if y is an exponential function, then y prime must also be an exponential function. So if y is an exponential function, then y prime is also an exponential function because all I've done is multiplied by a constant. If the form of y is exponential function, then y prime must also be exponential function because all we did was multiply by a constant. Do we agree? Of course, you kind of have to. It's, it's just like true. But every time I say it that way, it sounds like I'm trying to convince you of something. Oh, nothing up my sleeves. Now we just got to know what the, the constant of proportionality is. Since y is an exponential function, it can have many forms. Exponential functions have many forms. A times B to the X, the unit rate of change. A times M to the X over K, where we apply a multiple at a certain interval, a multiple M at interval K, bad choice of variable. Oh, well, let's call that one a capital K. Or a CE to the KT. I'm going to use the, I'm going to update this one. I'm going to call it CE to the, no, I'm going to leave it at CE to the KT. It's fine. I'm not implying that they're the same. We were inconsistent when we set these all up, so we'll just have to live with it. We have many different forms of exponential function. They all represent the same amount for different constants A, B, C, or A, B, C, K, M. For all those values, they represent, they can represent different constants. But we can make one look like the other. We can always make one look like the other. We just do some algebraic sleight of hand. One looks like the other. So if y is like c to the kt, then y prime is just 
some constant times C equal K T. Any questions? Do we see all of a sudden a flash back to right there again? Y prime is also exponential function. Do you see? It's proportional to the value of the function. Do you see? I don't know if anybody's seen that movie. This leads us to our second most favorite derivative rule. The derivative of an exponential function is some constant times this exponential function. The constant of proportionality is the natural log the base. The constant of proportionality is the natural log the base. Constant of proportionality is the natural log of the base. The derivative of a to the x is natural log of a times a to the x. Derivative of a to the x is the natural log of a times a to the x. This raises the question: Why was a the base when we learned about exponential function? Sorry, why was a the coefficient when we first learned about exponential functions? And b was the base, and now a is the base. And what's happened to b? Sometimes we are dicks with the name of our constants because everywhere I see this written down, they don't just like make a one say b. So the natural log of b to the x is natural log of b, sorry, derivative of b to the x is natural log of b times b to the x. I don't know why they don't do that, but they like change it to a. And I call them up and say, why do you guys, guys be like that? Why can't you be consistent? Like in a section on exponential functions, they're like, oh, a times b to the x. And all of a sudden now a is the base and it's a to the x? What the hell? And like, oh, leech, your restraining order applies to telephones as well. Son of a. And the sheriff shows up and is like, oh, you know, Professor Leach, they told you to stop being so pedantic at them. If you just knock that off. I'm like, oh, listen to you. I'm a math teacher. How could I be less pedantic? Uh, just tell me how that's supposed to work. It's like in the job description. I'm like, just go away. So sorry about that. I mean, this is just like, this is the, when you look things up, this is what's going to happen. Let's talk about the next evolution. Notice that in front, we've got this messy natural log of A. I don't want to have to write natural log of A all the time. So what am I going to change A to? So I don't have to have natural log of A running around. If I change it to B, I just have natural log of B running around. We're in the same situation. Just instead of the circle with a short line over here, it's a circle with a tall line over here. That's all we do with letters. We make a circle and then we put lines in different places. Right? This is like a P, Q, B, and then D. I might have done that backwards. All right, what's what's natural law? What's a natural law? What's our favorite natural law? So the next evolution is to not have a to the x. We'll use our favorite base. So next evolution. What's the natural log of e? One, natural log of e is equal to one. So the derivative of e to the x is the natural log of e 
times e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So natural log of e is one. I'm applying the same rule. I'm just applying it to e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's the next evolution of our derivative of natural log function. But we know the chain rule. So with the chain rule, this is the way we're going to remember this one. The derivative of e to the k times x is k times e to the kx. For an exponential function, the constant of proportionality is the continuous rate of increase or decrease. I'm going to be referring to k as a continuous rate. So it should have been r. And you're like, oh, why didn't you make it r? Because no one makes it r. We always use k. Why? The aforementioned dick move thing. So there's that. The constant of proportionality is the continuous rate of increase or decrease. Twenty minutes ago, I could have just said the derivative of e to the kx is e, is k e to the kx. But I think we make a better connection if we tie this to way we the way we discussed exponential functions before. That the rate of change of an exponential function is proportional to the function itself. But so he says now this derivative of e to the kx is k e to the kx. We can identify that the constant of proportionality is the continuous percent rate of increase. And if it's negative, it decreases. Now we're going to combine this with our previous rules, our knowledge that the derivative is a linear transformation. And so the derivative respects scalar multiplication. So I can just ke keep carrying the five because the five is a constant factor. So the derivative of five e to the two x is 10 e to the two x. So this is a lot of increase when it's e to the 2x. It's increasing at 100% per unit, a continuous rate of 100% per unit. So the separation would be it's 5 times the derivative with respect to x of e to the 2x. So there we are, we've got to remember that the derivative is a linear transformation and linear transformations respect scalar multiplication. Derivative of a constant times a function is that constant times the derivative of the function. The 
the derivative of e to the uh, three e to the negative 0 0.1 x is negative 0 0.3 e to the negative 0 0.1 x. The rate of change is proportional to the function. One thing to point out here is that e to the negative 0.1 x is a decreasing exponential function. So over here, we're looking at a decreasing exponential function. And what we see on in the derivative, so we're finding the derivative of a decreasing exponential function. Notice that the values of the derivative are all negative. And that makes sense. The rate of change should be negative. That's what's making the function decrease. A decreasing function will have a negative rate of change a negative derivative. TLDR, the derivative with respect to x of e to kx is k e to kx. That's the one functional thing that you need to have moving forward. The rest of it is context around why that, that makes sense. Any questions? Is everybody okay? See, this could have been like a... 20 second TikTok. You're like, well, the derivative of the tax is paid with the tax. Bye. I think it's math people still. It's a yes or no question. That will only take me an hour. All right. That so we now have a couple of rules. Tomorrow we will practice using this this rule along with our previous rules for derivatives and find some more derivatives. All right, that's it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow. Have a good day and thanks for playing.